Susan in Sang Langley, BC. Go ahead, Susan, please. Yes, I'm interested in interpipeline. I have quite a bit of Enbridge, and I'm thinking of adding interpipeline. I'd like your opinion, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, Susan, uh, I think at this point, when you look at IPL uh, interpipeline, it's a bit of a poor cousin uh, to Enbridge. Uh, it, despite the fact that defensive sectors did well through the fall, uh, Interpipe is trading at a basically a 52-week low relative to the market, mm -hmm. uh, so it's been significantly underperforming, uh, and it's it's a company that uh, I think I would I would stay focused in the Enbridge. Uh, I might take a look at a TransCanada pipe. But really what I'm trying to suggest to people right now is that they look more for dividend growth. And you're more likely, I think, going forward to see that in financials than, uh, than in the big pipes. Uh, because if, if we are going to get slowly rising rates over the next number of years, and I mean slowly, mm -hmm. last time rates started to rise, it took 15 years to go from 2% to 5.5 on a 10-year bond. But what happened in that 15 years was that the, the defensive sectors gave 0% rates of return over 15 years because you weren't offsetting rising rates. Mm -hmm. And if, if you look at the financials, whether it's the Canadian banks or U.S. banks, you're more likely to get better dividend growth going forward because they benefit from rising rates. Okay. Um, we have Dorothy standing by in Hamilton. Dorothy, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, um, I'm glad to see you back on the show, David. I've missed you over the last little while and your good advice. I've always done well with investments you've recommended. And I'm just wondering, um, I hold FDN, ITA, IYF, and IVV, and I really tend to like going into an ETF so that I don't have all my eggs in one basket. Yes. And I'm wondering whether to go into something like IHI or go into an ETF on the Canadian market. And I'm just wondering what your recommendation would be. Great. Thank you. So, so Dorothy, you know, when we look at leadership in the market, you know, what's come screaming back have been the previous leaders. Okay. So that's really encouraging because that's what should happen in a secular long-term bull market. Yeah. You have persistence. And so you mentioned FDN, which is internet retail. Um, if I look at the key themes in the U.S. market, and the reason the U.S. market was the last one to break down and the first one to reverse, it's because it's led by technology, led by consumer discretionary, led by health care, uh, and led by, um, led by some industrials. Okay? And you get all that in the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. The thing that is starting to make a turn are basic materials. And, you know, commodities are at a relative low versus the S&P, the lowest low since 1981, which, of course, was when rates started to fall. And if we are seeing the beginning of reflation, we should see a turn in those hard assets, and that can benefit the Canadian market. So I think it would be complimentary for you to consider adding some Canada. We've had very little Canada over the last three years. We have been adding to Canada over the last short while, and I think that it might help you get that exposure to the basic material side of things. Oh, okay. Um, let's head over. It's Reg or Reg in Winnipeg. Go ahead, please. Gentlemen, for taking my call. Pleasure. Um, David, David, here's a head scratcher for you. So Manulife Financial, I follow this pretty closely. So Manulife Financial, last six quarters, has beat the analyst ex estimations uh, quite handily, you know, increased their dividend. Uh, the stock is basically flatlined. And if you go to the TMX, you'll see that there's a pattern on this stock where the short sellers sell between 2.5 and 5 million shares every day. They just artificially churn it. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't get the recognition that it should based on the increased fundamentals that it is clearly showing in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Why is it not being recognized when, as an, an, as an analyst, a, and you have a stock that clearly is beating fundamentals, it's not appreciating. It makes zero sense. It's insanity. Okay. I, okay. I, 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 not, he's been frustrated for a while with Manuel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, here's the problem. Uh, like in real estate, a good house in a tough neighborhood doesn't do particularly well. And if you were to look at the insurance sector, you know, actually insurance brokers in the U.S. like Marsh McLennan and so on are doing very, very well. But the life insurance companies are having a hard time. 
So it's really not specific to Manulife. And uh, I would expect if you got a turn in the life insurance companies, you would get some better performance out of Manulife. But you're dealing with a tough sector backdrop right now. So uh, I would wait to watch the sector before I added to this position because virtually every stock in the sector looks similar. I don't think it's a Manulife problem. Let's head to Bala, Ontario. We've got Elizabeth on the line. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good afternoon, fellas. I'm calling about Magna Corp. It <coughs> seems to me like every time the stock starts to pick itself up, it, it falls. So I was wondering where you thought this stock was going. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, so when we talk about 2018, there were some sectors that rolled over early, and they were sectors that would get hurt if there was some kind of a slowdown. So the housing sector rolled over in January, February. The auto and auto parts sector rolled over around that time. The housing sector, the home builders, they, that rolled over at the same time. All of them had a very typical mid-cycle slowdown. And now we're seeing some kind of a turn. So home builders have now been relatively outperforming since October. Auto and auto parts are relatively outperforming. Uh, and so I think that we have seen a turn. Now the strongest companies in the auto parts are actually the, the auto parts retailers right now, like AutoZone and O'Reilly, both of them looking very, very strong. Um, but the auto parts companies are coming around as well. So companies, for instance, like LearCorp, uh, making a nice turn, today having a harder day. Look, we need a bit of a, a three or four or five day pullback off this initial move. But I think that you have seen a turn in this group. So I would have some patience with Magna. I know a year of tough performance is a long time to wait. Mm -hmm. uh, but at this point, you've lived through it. And I think that while they're likely to check back a little bit here, I think that they likely are going to perform quite well over the next year. Okay, stay tuned. We've got past picks from David Burrows coming up next on Market Call.